speaker is uh, Martin uh, Franklin from the University of Virginia. Uh, the title of his talk is The Homotopy Theory of Simplicial Back Modules. Um, yes, please take it away, uh, Martin. Thank you. Well, thank you. And first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for this opportunity to speak. It's been a really interesting session. Uh, what I want to talk about is uh, his work in progress. So the statements come with a plus or minus epsilon uh, technical assumptions, but uh, I still wanted to share with you what's going on here. And the project is really motivated by Quillen cohomology. So I want to start with that motivation. And what do I mean by Quillen cohomology or really Andre Quillen cohomology? That was a cohomology theory uh, developed in the 60s for commutative rings. It's the uh, Barbeck co-triple cohomology in that setup, but uh, Michel André and Dan Quillen uh, computed it and, and computed some of the, the properties of that cohomology theory. And uh, it's uh, given by simplicial resolutions, so non-additive derived functors using simplicial resolutions. And the, the goal was to solve some problems from commutative algebra and algebraic geometry. But one of the nice features of that construction is that it makes sense for any kind of algebraic structure, not just commutative rings. Um, so Andre's approach was really using this uh, standard simplicial resolution from a co-monad, whereas Quillen's approach was more focused on using the the model structure on simplicial objects. And uh, so because I'm following that approach, I'll, I'll be saying Quillen cohomology, but it, I could say Andre Quillen cohomology if I were less lazy. All right, uh, but this is a session about uh, categorical methods and the interaction with topology. So how can we solve some uh, topology problems using those categorical methods? So here's a, a sampler of some of the applications uh, that you can find in topology. So the um, so Miller's proof of the uh, Sullivan conjecture used under equivalent cohomology, the uh, Gorse Hopkins Miller theorem on the E infinity structure of uh, Lubin-Tate spectra is another highlight on that list, and the list goes on. There are many applications of under equivalent cohomology, even if you didn't care at all about commutative algebra to begin with, you just like topology, there are plenty of reasons to like and cohomology. So that's one of the uh, one of the upshots of this story. But uh, how does the project I want to talk about fit into that story? So um, in previous work, I worked out what happens to quill and cohomology if you have an adjunction. I mean, adjunctions abound in nature, and uh, you have those two algebraic categories, C and D, related by an adjunction, and then you can work out some comparison maps between quill and cohomology in both categories and some spectral sequences, things like that. So that's something I worked at before, but the machinery I used was really focused on a single object in the algebraic category and a single module over it. Whereas in uh, more homotopical applications, it's really important to deal with simplicial objects and simplicial modules. And so that's the goal of this project is to, uh, adapt this uh, this story to the context of having simplicial objects and simplicial modules over them. And that's where you run into some homotopy theory for those simplicial modules. All right, but uh, let's get comfortable with Beck modules without the simplicial direction. So what are Beck modules? Um, the setup here will be an algebraic category. So um, Earlier in the session, uh, André Joya uh, reminded us of algebraic theories and models over them. That's exactly the setup I'm working with. So an algebraic theory is just a small category with finite products, and a model for a theory is a product-preserving functor into sets, uh, finite product-preserving functor. And a category is algebraic if it is equivalent to the models for an algebraic theory. And I think in a categorical uh, crowd like that, I think most of you are familiar with Levere's work. So using Levere's work, Levere theories, you can describe an algebraic category in various equivalent forms. Um, you can, there's a, this categorical uh, characterization, co-complete, has a set of small projective generators and it's bar exact. Uh, it's a unsorted or many sorted finite area variety of alge uh, algebras 
So something you can describe with some underlying set or graded set with a bunch of operations satisfying a bunch of equations. That's it. Or if you prefer monads, you can use monads, go for it. So it's, all, uh, it's all available. And all of the algebraic structures we know and love from everyday math are examples thereof. Um, so there we go. That's a fairly broad uh, class of categories. And in that setup, uh, I'm going to look at Beck modules and Beck's proposed definition of a module back in his thesis from uh, the 60s was an abelian group object in the slice category over the object X. And I'll get back to that, but the motivating example here is for commutative rings. If you're working the category of commutative rings, this definition recovers exactly the usual notion of a module over a commutative ring. Uh, but a bit of terminology before we do that. I'll denote by mod X, the category of Beck modules over X, just the abelian group objects in the slice category. And if you have abelian group objects, you can forget the abelian group structure. And then you can uh, freely adjoin it, namely the uh, left adjoint of the forgetful functor is called the abelianization. That's uh, what I'll be denoting it. So uh, forgetful functor U and the abelianization AB for the slice category. And given that setup, we can now define Quillen cohomology. Well, if you start with the object X itself, you simplicially resolve it. So you take a cofibrant replacement in the model category of simplicial objects uh, that produces a simplicial object over X, abelianize the whole thing, you get a simplicial Beck module. Think of that as a, as a chain complex by adult con, and there you go. That's a chain complex, take its homology groups, and those are the Quillen homology groups of X. If you um, prefer some coefficients, go for it. Tensor with um, a module, that works. And if you prefer cohomology, then you want to hom into the module. And that's where you get a co-simplicial abelian group. Think of that as a co-chain complex of abelian groups and take the cohomology groups. Those are the Quillen cohomology groups. All right. But really, that's just for motivation. The focus of the project is uh, on dealing with uh, simplicial modules themselves. So what can we do with modules? Well, if you have a map from X to Y, then, oh, did I, did I write that? Well, here F is a map from X to Y. You can pull back along F and that passes to back modules. And uh, under the assumptions, uh, that we had before, this automatically has a push forward, the left adjoint to pull back. It's called the push forward. And by the uh, adjoint functor theorem for locally presentable categories, you, you get that for free in this case. So you have pullbacks and push forwards. And think of that as restricting the scalars or extending the scalars. And again, that's not just an analogy, it's literally true <laughs> if C is commutative rings. So this is really a generalization of what happens in good old fashioned commutative rings. Let's start with non-commutative rings or possibly non-commutative rings. So I'm looking at the category of associative unital K algebras. Okay, we'll run a few examples. What happens in that example? Well, deck modules over um, a K algebra are bimodules. And here's how this correspondence goes. Uh, Beck module will be a split extension with square zero kernel. And those two actions, the left action and the right action, are encoded by this formula, by the multiplication in that total space object sitting in the middle in the extension. And the actions have to coincide for scalars in K. All right, that's nice. And what are the other ingredients? Well, if you have a map F, you can push forward the usual way, just tensor on both sides. And, and restriction of scalars is the usual restriction. And this abelianization is given by kernel of the multiplication. So those are all familiar constructions. And what is the cohomology theory you get out of that? It's not a brand new cohomology theory up to some shift in degree. It, it um, agrees with Schuchla cohomology, derived Hochschild cohomology. And that's, um, that's a general pattern. There are many cases where you see this shift uh, in degree by one. Um, so that's, that's one such example. Commutative rings, the, the OR example, 
then uh, the category of Beck modules over commutative algebra A is the usual category of modules. And the correspondence is almost the same as before. In fact, it's exactly the same, but now multiplication in that extension has to be commutative. And that forces the two actions to be the same. So there's really only one action in this case. All right. And what can we do with the map of commutative rings? You can restrict the scalars, good old fashioned restriction of scalars, which has as left adjoint, the good old fashioned extension of scalars. There we go. That's the example I was alluding to. And if you abelianize, then you get this construction, the module of Kähler differentials. So you still have this kernel of the multiplication, but you mod out all the, um, yeah, the square of that ideal. You get the Kähler differentials whose job it is to represent derivations. So there's a universal derivation from A to the Kähler differentials and restriction along that universal derivation gives you this isomorphism. All right, so that's why when you hear about Andrik Will and Co homology, uh, it's the non-additive derived functors of derivations in that sense. Let's look at another example. Uh, what about groups? Another familiar algebraic category. In that case, the Beck modules over uh, group G are the usual G modules. Uh, so just a, an abelian group with a G action on it. But note that Beck modules over G are agnostic between left and right. They don't pick a, a direction, uh, whereas saying a left action clearly picks left or right action. But uh, of course you can turn a left action into a right action because uh, you can invert elements in a group. So that works. And if you write it just as uh, an extension was well, going to be a semi-direct product. And out of the multiplication in the extension, you can read off the G action by this formula. So that's the story for groups, Beck modules over them. Oh yeah, and then there's more. What if you have a homomorphism of groups? Then you can restrict the scalars, usual way. Push forward is again an extension of scalars by tensoring with uh, the group algebra ZH, group ring. And this abelianization is given by the kernel of the augmentation. The augmentation map is just adding up all the coefficients in a formal uh, sum of elements of G. Then you get this uh, kernel. And if you look at the cohomology, get cohomology theory you get out of that, it recovers group cohomology. So in that case, again, uh, Quillen cohomology for groups is um, it's interesting. It's a well-known cohomology theory, but it's not brand new. It was really uh, for commutative rings that something special happened. All right, but we still get that Quillen cohomology are non-additive derived uh, functors of derivations. That's what they are. And one more example while we're at it, let's look at abelian groups. Well, in that case, modules or Beck modules of an abelian group, uh, naively you might think, well, it, maybe it's just A objects in abelian groups, but no, actually the action is trivial. You only get abelian groups. That's because if you look at the previous formula with the extension in the middle, uh, that's still true, but now the multiplication in the middle has to be commutative and that forces the action to be trivial. Right, right, uh, let's see, abelian groups or Z modules. And does that, I'm guessing the question is, does that help us if we view abelian groups as Z modules? Oh, if you, okay, if you take, take maybe R modules for your favorite commutative ring, R, and you apply the same gadget. Yeah, 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 in that case, actually that's gonna be covered in the next example, because that generalizes, yeah. So the question was, what, what if you look at R modules for my favorite commutative ring, R? Uh, well, in fact, as soon as your category is additive, this collapsing happens. Uh, Beck modules over every object are canonically identified with the ambient category, which is itself additive. And the correspondence is just picking the kernel of that, uh, that split IP. So already Beck noticed that uh, for additive categories, that happens automatically. It's by the splitting lemma. You have all the ingredients for the splitting lemma. 
And because we're looking at modules over different objects um, and maps between them, well, we want to think of this pseudo functor that assigns to each object its abelian category of back modules and to each morphism the pullback functor. That's a pseudo functor. And uh, I'm sure when you see a pseudo functor, you feel the urge to apply the Groton deconstruction, and that's a good idea. Just go ahead and apply the Groton deconstruction. You get this fiber category over C where the fiber over an object X is exactly the category of Beck module. So, so I was tempted to call it mod C because it's the fiber category of Beck modules, but it's, um, I think it's more established um, terminology to call that the tangent category of C. Uh, so I'll switch notations to that more established uh, notation of TC. And that's exactly the tangent category that was mentioned in, in Jeff Cruckwell's talk earlier in the session last week. There it is, it's exactly that. And more concretely, what's an object in there? It's just an object in the ground category together with a Beck module over it. And then morphisms are what they have to be. So little squares. Yeah. And uh, there's also an infinity categorical version of that construction uh, that was briefly mentioned in Christine Bauer's talk earlier as well. Uh, it uses stabilization instead of abelianization. So you, you stabilize all the all the slice categories and uh so Lurie uh worked out the purely infinity categorical construction and uh Har harpa's newton and prasma gave a model category presentation of that but it, it yeah the antecedents are really in shveda's work on uh, simplicial rings and bastara mandel on e infinity ring spectra so that's been around for a while but in my project i'm focusing on this one categorical version i'll just be using the simplicial direction for homotopy theory that's, it's only coming from the simplicial direction, not the full-blown homotopical construction that's there. All right, what does that tangent category look like? Well, we've already seen an example uh, where it's trivial. If you start with an additive category that has finite limits, then its tangent category is canonically just the product, just like the tangent bundle of a Euclidean space is canonically the Euclidean space product with itself. Same deal. If you do that with groups, well, it's a group and a module over it. That's the bottom part of a pi algebra. A pi algebra is something that looks like the homotopy groups of a space. It looks like a pi one and a pi two. And that's what got me thinking about that many years ago. So that's a familiar algebraic structure. If you do that with um, K algebras, you get an algebra and a bi module over it. Well, that's just the bottom part of a DG algebra. So, all right, also a familiar structure. If you do that with commutative algebras, it's okay, it's a commutative algebra and a module over it. That's also the bottom part of a DG, a commutative DG algebra. So those tangent categories are not too exotic. They look like familiar algebraic structure. All right, now let's jump into the heart of the project where you have a simplicial direction. So I'm going to work in the in simplicial objects in C. So SC denotes uh, simplicial objects in my category C. And then Quillen's standard model structure for that is, um, is induced by that of simplicial sets. It's right induced. So in other words, you look at the underlying map of, uh, of simplicial sets or graded sets, and you say that a map of simplicial objects is a vibration or weak equivalence if it is so at the level of underlying Simplicial sets or graded sets. A little bit more generally, you test by homing out of projectives. So, uh, yeah, so it's just a right induced model structure. If you had an underlying set or underlying graded set, it's just right induced along this forgetful functor that forgets the algebraic structure and keeps the underlying uh, S graded set, where S is my set of sorts. Let's see. So yeah, simplicial rings, well, the map of simplicial rings has an underlying map of simplicial sets, and you play that game. All right, and Quillen proved that this works in a fairly broad generality. I'm gonna say that a complete and co-complete category has nice simplicial objects if that definition defines a model structure. So with that uh, arguably goofy terminology, uh, Quillen's theorem is saying that any quasi-algebraic category has nice simplicial objects. The quasi there uh, just means that you can drop the bar exactness. It's not needed in the argument. Um, so if you prefer um, 
implicational classes for the universal algebraists among you. That's implicational classes via Isbell's characterization theorem. So things like torsion-free Beyond groups, commutative rings without nil potents, you can throw that in. And um, if you start with such a category that has nice simplicial objects, then you want to know, well, does the tangent category satisfy that as well? Um, I was hoping that it's true without further assumption. Um, so far in the argument uh, I'm looking at, I would need to assume that the simplicial objects uh, form a cofibrantly generated model category. I'm, maybe I can still drop that if I work harder, but uh, let's just assume that slight technical assumption, which is fine for algebraic categories, no problem. So in that case, the tangent category does inherit that property of having nice simplicial objects, so you can talk about the standard model structure in the tangent category. All right, and how else can you produce uh, model structures here? Well, you can look at uh, Beck modules over a simplicial object. So I'm looking at the slice category over my favorite simplicial object, think simplicial ring, simplicial commutative ring. Abelianize that, you get the Beck modules, but then you can forget the abelian group structure, and now the target has a perfectly fine model structure, so you can hope to uh, write induce a model structure on the source, and you can. So the, the theorems for write inducing a model structure apply in that case. And you do get this uh, homotopy theory, well, this model structure on simplicial modules of a simplicial object that uh, recovers, generalizes that of Quillen for a simplicial commutative rings. Uh, Schweda also worked out various properties of that model structure for um, simplicial modules of a simplicial ring. And there's another way of thinking about model structures in this context. Well, if you look at simplicial objects in the tangent category, that turns out to be the same as the tangent category to simplicial objects. It's not no, it's nothing very deep. It's just playing around with the structures and more concretely what's going on. Okay, you start with a simplicial object. And what's a simplicial module over? It's a module in each degree. And all the face maps and degeneracy maps have to be maps uh, of module over their corresponding face and degeneracy maps downstairs in the original simplicial diagram. So that's, that's what's going on in the previous lemma. And then it turns out that if you look at the standard model structure on simplicial objects in the tangent category, they restrict to a model structure to each fiber. I mean, that's an interesting feature. If I start with any fiber category and a model structure on the total category, I would not expect that necessarily to be compatible with the fibers, but in this case it is. So that works. And even better, oh yeah, and it's, it uh, restricts to a model structure which is the same one that appeared earlier via right induced as a right induced model structure. So that's nice. And there's another point of view on that model structure. In fact, uh, if you're given a fiber category with a model structure on each fiber and certain technical conditions, then uh, Harpaz and Prasma give you a, a Grotten deconstruction. So they produce a, the so called int, uh, the, what they call integral model structure on the total category. And in this case, their assumptions are met, and, uh, and it turns out that you get the same model structure as the standard model structure on simplicial objects in the total category. So there are various reasons why this homotopy theory exists, and they're all related to each other. And what do I want to do with that? Uh, well, I would like to develop some, some tools um, inspired by what Quillen did with uh, simplicial commutative rings and simplicial modules over them. So things like the transitivity sequence, uh, flat base change, some uh, universal coefficient spectral sequences. So my, uh, yeah, looking at what Quillen did has always been a, a good strategy for me. So I'm gonna pursue that direction. And I thank you for your attention. Thank you, thank you for the Lovely talk, Martin. Um, are there any questions or comments for Martin? I'll just say I, I loved your final phrase. Looking at what Kilan did has always been a, a good strategy. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> and go wrong with that. <laughs> uh, maybe just a comment. One one little question. Uh, in, the, in the case of algebraic theories, um, I mean, you can view a simplicial, say, a simplicial ring or a simplicial algebraic object with some operations as uh, a simplicial set with the operations. Mm -hmm. Does that help? Does that point of view? Help yeah, that's interesting, right? If I think of, um, say, a simplicial group, you're saying that I can think of it as a group object in simplicial sets, or yeah, yeah or a simplicial object in groups. Those are the same. Right? Um, yeah, that's an, that's an interesting remark. Uh, I I don't know if that gives you extra mileage. Uh, maybe it does, because that point of view would be saying that the natural thing to look at is the forgetful functor to simplicial sets. Well, let's see. Maybe it does. I, I haven't played around with that point of view, but yeah, well, it, it is true that you can commute those two constructions. What I had in mind was uh, replace sets by some other category when you right. find algebraic theories, uh, you know, unlike yeah. like those yeah. simplicial. So. Right, Maybe right. That's true. From that point of view, you could look at group objects in your favorite category or, or ring objects in your favorite category. It wouldn't have to be sets. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think for that kind of generalization, that would be a fruitful point of view. So I, I haven't explored that direction, but, but thank you for the comment. Mm -hmm. okay. mm, I just have a question. Uh, nice. This was a nice talk. Thank you. Uh, I'm curious uh, about um, your uh, extension to simplicial object. So when uh, you define um, a quillen cohomology, you take a, a resolution of uh, the base object, right? Yep. And uh, then you apply the free module functors and uh, you compute that. Now, in the context of uh, simplicial objects, if your base is already a simplicial object, um, what are you doing? Are you sort of taking right. a, a right. co replacement of it or something? Right, like? very good question. Uh, I swept that under the rug. So the question was, what happens uh, in that more homotopical story? How do you define co and co-homology? Um, the fully homotopical analog it's it's really a derived mapping space in some appropriate uh, model category or infinity category into some appropriate uh, loops on some module. So you really need derived mapping space in some homotopy theory. Uh, so I gave the simplified description when you have a very explicit cold chain complex that computes that. Uh, for this intermediate story that I'm looking at where I don't go full-blown homotopy theory, just simplicial objects, uh, you might think, well, okay, you still get some, maybe some bi-simplicial objects, some bi-simplicial, some bi-complex out of that. I, that's been on my mind. I, I think maybe you can uh, get away with some, uh, some totalization of a bi-complex, but I, I haven't quite worked that out. I suspect that it simplifies um, without referring to those derived mapping spaces in simplicial objects. I, I don't know that addresses that addresses okay. the question okay okay thank you that's a really uh good answer yeah thank, thank you, you. Um, yeah so you're going to put your slide uh your slide will be available yeah, i'll post them on the forum okay with some reference maybe uh, the, hmm, did not include them here uh I, yeah, maybe I should, uh, or maybe we can we can email if if you want. Uh, okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much, Martin. Um, and thank you, thank you everyone for your questions. Um, yeah. Could I ask you, uh, Daniel, to 